What's up, guys? It's Legendary Vash and Chris from Papaholics, and we're here to doing a Star Wars video. Yes, as you see on the Care for Spoilers channel, an actual Star Wars video to talk it's about happening. Star Wars. And as you saw in the past couple of days, an Obi Wan trailer came out because he said no words. And I was hoping to see a, or hear a hello there. Right, Chris? Not a hello there in sight. But I'm sure we'll get one, at least one, uh, over the course of the six episodes. Yes. They're six saving episodes. it. You know, we, you know we, we, we need to have the buildup so when he finally says it, uh, all the fans go crazy. Yes. And I can't wait for that because it's going to be coming soon. May 6th, I believe. May 25th, the May 25th. 45th anniversary of uh, Star Wars A New Hope. I'm shocked they didn't. They were not going to drop it on May 4th. That would have been some great promo for that, May 4th. But makes sense that when they want to do it on the anniversary of New Hope. So that makes yeah. total sense for that. And it's a limited series as well. So for now, as what we're told, it's only going to be this one six episode run. So let's see how we all feel about that. But before we get straight into the Obi-Wan series, I mean, the Obi-Wan trailer and the discussion, how we feel, let's jump into a long time ago, 20 years ago, about the prequels. Because right now, there's a new wave of new shows, new stuff coming out of Star Wars. But we want to talk about, since this is an Obi-Wan, where we see Warren McGregor talking about his run in his run in this character. Mm -hmm. And in the most recent... And in the most recent type of interview from IGN, he said there's a new wave of positivity yeah. people have been discussing about the prequels. So, Chris, how do we feel about the prequels and his comments? So, I will say this. Uh, I saw all three prequel films in theaters when they mm -hmm. first came out. And over the course of the last 20 years, my relationship with these films... I'll say has been complicated to say the least. Uh, mostly because like as they were coming out, it, it, it's it's certainly a love hate relationship. When uh, it was just the prequels and we weren't getting any more Star Wars, Disney had yet to buy Lucasfilm. Uh, I I would say that Revenge of the Sith was probably my favorite out of all three of those films, and I consider that the strongest out of all three of uh you know what what were weaker star wars films in my opinion at the time you know it was i'm not gonna say that i was riding the popularity train of hating on the prequels for a long time for i would say a decade worth uh they just didn't seem like very good star wars but uh i revisited the prequels in 2019 for papaholics before rise of skywalker came out we watched every star wars film uh, including the sequel trilogy, to kind of build hype for our review of that particular movie. And upon revisiting those movies, uh, I had a whole new opinion of them. Uh, and I, I kind of attribute yes, that wait. opinion to what Dave Filoni did with Clone Wars. I think because Dave Filoni released seven seasons worth of storytelling that really builds upon Anakin's character. It shows you his relationship with Obi-Wan. It shows you this transition of uh, this Jedi Knight falling to the dark side. It adds a lot of context to both the Jedi and the clones for this particular era of Star Wars. And I think retroactively, it kind of made me really love the prequels, having all this additional context. So now, uh, if you ask me how I feel about the prequels, I will be a prequels apologist or defender, you know, nice. because it, All right. I, I, my mind really has been changed uh, in comparison to how I felt about them, you know, 15, 10 years ago. What about you? How do you feel about the prequels? So as many people know, I am technically the youngest out of the Council of Villains. So when the prequels came out, I was around six let's say five to five to ten years old you're so, like prime star wars demographic right i was the <laughs> audience for this so at first i loved it when i was a kid but then at the same time as a kid i noticed that there weren't some things that should work like the whole roger roger a thousand times hearing it in in the movie and in the clone wars in the extra cartoons like yo can you roger roger shut the hell up before i go in and rip <laughs> your heads off so 
those type of things and you know the most loving hated character in the in the prequel trilogy i uh, can't remember his name right now top of my head but i do George know Binks. He, yes thank you um um George Binks. everyone hated him i i hated him and i used to have a stutter problem when, when i was a kid still do but it's barely noticeable but as a kid it was noticeable since school and everything and i used to even hate a guy that who can that you couldn't even understand well in mm-hmm. the show in the prequels so i was like yo what the hell's wrong with this guy george lucas why did you make him but like you said chris um i loved them the most when i was a kid for saw them but i start to like them not love them but start to appreciate them a lot more because of the clone wars cartoon and the red bulls the show that came out much years later yeah. because with disney and it was made by dave filoni who used to work for George Lucas. So that's what I love about Clone Wars and Rebels. I have always said before before Mando Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan came out years years later, I've always said that Star Wars would be great as a TV show because of what they did with Rebels and now with Mando, now with Book of Boba Fett and now with all these shows that we're going to discuss much later. I feel like it's been doing such a great job because I feel like with the movies, it tells us a piece of the story, but then the books and the comics just give us a lot more. And that's what I love about Star Wars currently. And I feel like I love how people are starting to give this big love and appreciation towards the prequels, towards that type of era, even though we have those type of Malachorians, you know, to discuss in your blood cells and everything. The Malachorians, yeah. The, that will always make me laugh. Like, it depends on how high because of Skywalker. He has such a high Malachorians. I'm like, okay, that's such a weird way to discuss how powerful your force is inside. But okay, George Lucas, that's a pretty interesting way we're that's going forward. To. <laughs> but I'm loving how people are starting to give this type of positivity because with rebels bad batch is it is an exciting time for us to be in star wars and a lot of people are starting to give back the love for what happened if you love it or not with the sequel trilogy people start to get very half a half if yeah. you start to hate it or not so i'm loving that people the, start the to star come wars back into it. the star wars fandom has always been a complex fandom <laughs> that's an interesting uh, word for it it's uh, I feel like it's a nice way to put it. There, there. We've always had ups and downs in this fandom. I'll say that. And and the fandoms are always interesting. So if you love, if you love the prequel, let us know down in the comments because we love to, we love to discuss the series. And if you love the prequels, tell us what you enjoyed the most, and tell us enjoy that. What did you want more out of it? That possibly they could bring more in the other shows that they're going to be discussing much later in this video or in the next couple of years that they could bring down the, the down the pipeline. So I can't wait for them to bring. But with that being said about the prequels and our love for it and what has changed for us, now let's get jump into the main topic of this video, the Obi-Wan trailer. There's only less than two minutes. It's about yes. roughly 145. What were you expected to see once we heard the Obi-Wan trailer was going to drop? Not what you saw and how excited what you were to see said characters popping in, but mm-hmm. more is that what were you excited to see knowing that this is this time gap of the six episodes? What were you hoping to see and what did you want to see? So uh, I tried to go into this trailer with uh, as few expectations as possible. Uh, you know, you're you're in production. You know that I follow production heavily when it comes to uh, Star Wars and DC and Marvel and film in general. Mm-hmm. So I, I already knew a lot about this project prior to seeing any footage from it, right? So I couldn't stop myself from bringing that baggage to the first viewing of the trailer. But uh, in terms of expectation, I was trying to go in with as little expectation as possible. That way uh, I could enjoy it as much as I possibly could. Ewan McGregor is the strongest part, whether, you know, regardless of how you feel feel about the prequels now, Ewan McGregor was definitely one of the strongest aspects of the prequel trilogy, just his pure performance and his mm-hmm. acting ability. So the fact that we're getting now 
an Obi-Wan Kenobi show that is solely based on that character, uh, for that reason alone, this is my most anticipated show of 2022 in, in all genre. So, uh, <laughs> and I say that right after saying that my expectations were low for seeing this footage. It's so, like, that's contradicting. I'm excited. It is. It's very I'm contradictory. Yes. Uh, Vash, this is my most hype show for the year, but I'm trying to go in with no expectations. Um, that was like me with Batman. Hey, it's not my top five, but now... After seeing it, I fucking love this film. I broke it down with James and Steve for three hours long. This is how much I love the film. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, uh, I would have been happy just seeing Obi-Wan Kenobi wandering around Tatooine for two minutes. I don't, based on what I know from the project, I don't need to see anything else. I I'm just already excited. They could have skipped a trailer and I still would have watched the show. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm, I'm coming from. Uh first viewing or, or before even seeing it my excitement or my before knowing this show is going to drop i was not going to plan to watch it but you know we we make podcasts we are part of this industry like i work in production like you said so i was i was going to hear about it at work or i was going to see in the timeline so i knew i was going to about to watch it but what i was excited because two people are the only people that would have made this show good if they never came back and it was Ewan McGregor, and it was Hayden Christensen. If they mm -hmm. did not come back, I would have not been excited because these are the people that made those prequels and the yeah. chemistry on screen. They're the and, focal points. Correct. And when we were approaching, when we were approaching the show, and there was small, there was small type of interviews coming out, and he said that the only reason he came back was because he was going to be part of the project, part of the script, and he wanted to make sure that this fitted for the star wars universe i'm not i cool respect because it's not about the money it's not it was a passion project you're coming back because you know that you you want to give love to this project right and how he wants much... to do right by the character right correct so i'm like right, cool so i jumped in to this trailer just for that excitement because i'm like cool i love it when actors and workers come back just because of a passion project and what you want to do right by the character and also, there was rumors um, of certain characters coming in from Rebels and Clone Wars. And I'm yes. like, who are they going to pull out of? Because they already did they already did Ahsoka, rumors of Thawne is going to be coming back, rumors of, um, rumors of Ezra Miller. Mm -hmm. He's going to be joining us well sometime in one of the shows. I'm Ezra like, who Bridger. else? Yes, thank you. Ezra, I said Ezra Miller, I, I think the actor. Wow. The actor that plays the Flash, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole different <laughs> character. But, so I'm like, okay, cool. With these things coming on screen, who else can they add? I should have realized the Inquisitors. Those are the things that they could add from Rebels and other characters that have not been brought from the dark side. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about the trailer? The Inquisitors, the score. How did you feel that they pull your heartstrings coming into the trailer and feel like, Damn, why can't May 25th come come already? Oh, the trailer was perfect, Vash. Uh, you know, we get to see Obi-Wan Kenobi as a broken man, having failed to save the Jedi Order, having failed to save his apprentice, Anakin, from turning to the dark side. You know, he's kind of spending these last 10 years from Revenge of the Sith, simply wandering around Tatooine and watching over Luke, which who we also get to see in this trailer. We, I mean, we knew uh, there, there were rumors and leaks that, a young Luke was being cast for this show, as well as a young Leia, whom we haven't seen yet, which I'm very excited to see. Um, but we got to see Luke, you know, kind of pretending to be a pilot here. We we knew the Inquisitors were going to be in the show, so getting to see the footage of them uh, in this mini series was incredibly exciting. You and I were talking a little bit uh, before we started recording about Star Wars scores, you know, John Williams' score for these oh, yeah. films and how Star Wars marketing always tends to utilize the scores as a means to pull you in and get you hyped. Ooh, and yeah. with the trailer kind of starting with that little snippet of Battle of Heroes, the song that plays over the, the Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi fight in Revenge of the Sith, and then we get the Lucasfilm logo, and it goes into Duel of the Fates. Duel of the Fates, I, I mean, perfect I was, transition. I was hooked. I, uh, I, and that's only like 30 seconds in, if that to the trailer. So like, regardless of what they were going to show me after that, I was like, I don't need any more. 
I'm full. I've had enough. I'm going to watch right your there. show. <laughs> that trailer, it was 30 seconds. Just show the score, show the logo. All right, guys, that's it. I see Done. you May 25th. Yeah, I'm, I'm passed out at that point. <laughs> it was just so good. That's a, that transition of do the fate. Like, I'm a score guy. Chris, I know you are too. And when when the trailer knows how to pull your heartstring and pull scores at the combination and transition it very well, but showing, look, like, I'm happy that they didn't get Mark Hamill and do any, any type of special effects and type and of CG extreme as a kid. de-aging. Yeah, Even de-aging, younger like, than we saw him in A New Hope. <laughs> right? Like, hey, instead of us having de-aged you in Mando 20 years, let's de-age you by 60 years now. Yeah. I'm like, hey, Disney, just hire a kid that looks like him with blonde hair. Or if you want, just get Sebastian Stan and just de-age him instead then because you're just wasting money now and time and effort. Cause... That would be weird too. Uh, de-aging Sebastian Stan to a 10-year-old child. <laughs> That went way, way too much. But it's just so good to see the Grand Inquisitor. But let's just talk about the big app in the room. He don't look that great. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he looks a little off. You know, we recently just got Cad Bane and Book of Boba Fett. Which so that look good. He did. He looked great. You know, they still had Corey Burton doing his voice. Yes. So there, there were a lot of elements there when you look at that character and you go, okay, that's Cad Bane. Um. For some reason, they didn't hire uh, Jason Isaacs to come back and and play the Grand Inquisitor in live action. I feel like he has the facial features to do so. Maybe he was busy or they just couldn't get him for some reason. But uh, in terms of the way the Grand Inquisitor looks, he just isn't quite there. And I know there are certain aspects that you have to change for live action production that are different from animation. There are certain things you just can't do. But... We've seen this species in Star Wars before in Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. And that's the inspiration they pull for the Grand Inquisitor in Rebels. So it's strange to me that like we see the species in live action, they adapt it to animation. And then when we go back to live action, he looks nothing like that original species that we saw. So, you know, there's still time for them to maybe shift some things in post-production. They might be able to like elongate his face a, a little bit they could make his eyes yellow if they needed to but first impressions are uh, it was a little jarring to be perfectly honest but again you know it comes down to performance if the performance is there and the way the character looks disappears and, and you watch the performance and you're like this is the grand inquisitor then in the end it doesn't really matter anyway but uh, i would hope that by the time the show airs they tweak him just a little bit one one of the comments i saw on the timeline um i don't know if you if you're gonna laugh about this, but I did. Um, they said that he's gonna get his head much bigger, like the way we saw him back in Rebels. It's won't it's once he fights Obi Wan and gets his ass kicked, his head becomes much thinner and taller. So Obi Wan just kind of like squeezes his skull to make it like more cone head like, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that comment. I'm like, if that happens, I wouldn't mind it because it would just be hilarious. But if it does, it, it would just make your mind like, I guess this is a very no weird in universe reason uh, for having him look the way he does in Rebels, which I mean, does take place after this show. Yeah, I think it takes, I think, five, ten years, five, ten years later. So Something if it like does that, happen, yeah. if it does happen, like, I guess, but if that's an excuse for them just to do that much later in the show, I'm like, that's just a weird idea. I don't need an in-universe reason. Just spend a little money and fix it in post. You're Lucasfilm, for God's sake. But overall, I well, when I first saw the Grand Inquisitors and the others, I was excited. Like, no matter about the design, like you said, if the, if the acting is good, if the body language is good, if the fighting choreography is good, then I'm all for it. It's because yeah. you said Cat Bane, it was great. He did the walk. I don't know how people knew just by far away. Oh, shit, that's Cat Bane. Like, I had to wait like a couple of seconds. So, oh, like, oh, that's Cat Bane. But knowing that if you could execute your role, that you got hired. And for us as the audience could say, oh, that looks like the same from Rebels, the same comic type of character. All right, I'm all for it. If the design is not, not perfect, Probably you didn't have the right um, prop material. You'd have you you didn't have enough time for post 
who knows what it may be for the reason, but yeah, if it looks good and, and the act's done, I'm all for it. I agree. I agree. Uh, and we'll see once the show comes out whether or not um, this actor is able to deliver. I'm, I don't know his name off the top of my head, unfortunately. Yeah. But... Um, the one in quiz that I'm excited to see, um, she doesn't look familiar from Rebels, is the one um, is the one that we saw her in most of the trailer. Um, is the quiz that was by herself. I think she's done by Simone, Simone Kessel. I mm-hmm. think she's the one that does the Inquisitor there. She mm-hmm. looks good and badass. Yeah, she does. She does. I'm excited. I And I think that's a new character that we've never seen before. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, because I'm like, this is a character that we haven't seen before. So curious to see what we're going to see and how much of Darth Vader we're going to see in each episode because he's listed for six episodes. That, that means we're going to see him in every one. So I'm curious to see how many episodes we're going to see him. Like, I'm sorry, how long in each one? Like two minutes, five minutes. Right. And would it be him doing the actual voice of Darth Vader in this time? This is what I'm curious as well. So it's interesting. And I was talking a a little bit about this on the Papaholics uh, the other day. But you don't hire Hayden Christensen to play Darth Vader. You hire Hayden Christensen to play Anakin Skywalker because there have been so many people that have contributed to bringing Darth Vader to life over the last 45 years. You know, you mm-hmm. have, you have stunt men, you have James Earl Jones. There, there've been multiple people under the suit. Hayden Christensen did wear the suit toward the end of revenge of the Sith. Yes, because he, did. he felt as though uh, he was kind of owed that, you know, having portrayed Anakin for such a long time, he wanted to, as an actor, feel that transition to the dark side, but you're not going to pay Hayden Christensen if he's going to be under the Darth Vader mask for six episodes exactly. because it could literally be anybody. That leads me to believe that we're probably either going to be doing, going to be getting multiple flashbacks to Ooh. Obi-Wan and Anakin's relationship either during the Clone Wars or before them, or uh, at some point in time, we will see Vader without the mask, which we have seen in the past, but not a lot of. You know, and it mm-hmm. would just be like a totally burnt uh, and scarred Hayden Christensen, like at the end of, end of Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, most likely. His mask might crack at some point, like we saw in Rebels. They've done that before. Uh, we get a glimpse of him underneath the mask. So there's a lot of potential for what they can do with Darth Vader over the course of these six episodes. But I, I'm excited. As far as we know, uh, I believe Hayden Christensen has said in interviews that this is going to be the most powerful Darth Vader we've ever seen, which makes sense considering that he's kind of like in his prime at this point as a I'm Sith. hoping I, I I'm hoping I'm not sure if we get will get it but we get if we get the comic accurate Darth Vader that was seen in the comics mm-hmm. of his run yeah. of which he's talking about that the most powerful Vader we have seen if that's the case curious to see what kind of what kind of brutality we will be seeing from his side because those are some very high remarks for you to say that. Yeah. I, you know, that hallway scene in rogue one is one of the coolest star Wars scene scenes in all of star Wars history. So I just want more of that. Give me that times a hundred. Uh, and I'll, I'll be happy. <laughs> I was going to ask, um, you said about the flashback, we will most likely be seeing him in clone wars and everything as that. Do you think that this will be the first time that we'll be seeing Ahsoka in a flashback with Hayden that that we never got to see in the prequel since that was only a added story within Clone Wars, the cartoon? Do you think we we will see Ahsoka in the flashback possibly? I don't personally think we'll see Rosario Dawson in this show. However, Hayden Christensen has also signed on to be in Ahsoka. So for Ooh. those people that want to see that, you know, um, whether it be in flashbacks or whether it be Ahsoka Tano communing with Anakin Skywalker after his death and he's a force ghost, there will be some interactions between Anakin and Ahsoka again, I think. But uh, not in this show. I think we'll see it in, in the Ahsoka show. All right. Um, that answers my question perfectly because I um, totally forgot about that announcement once the day. I'm like, oh, yes, that does ring a bell. Um, what else from the trailer did you see that you wanted to be hype about or saw that a character or 
a a planet or, or something that we saw that really sh- sh- that shocked your attention dude seeing joel edgerton come back as owen lars i know this probably sounds very silly but it got me really hyped because the few scenes where he's like standing down an inquisitor makes him seem like such a badass and, and you know in, in a new hope we hear his opinion of obi-wan kenobi and he doesn't hold obi-wan kenobi in very high regard uh, you know he calls him like you know an old man and a wizard and like he tells luke to stay away from him and everything but even you can see in this moment that that owen lars is still uh respectful of obi-wan kenobi he understands what obi-wan's mission is and he knows that the mission is to protect his nephew so he's unwavering when it comes to giving up uh obi-wan's location and i really like that you know we don't get a lot from joel edgerton in the prequel trilogy he's like a couple scenes one in uh attack of the clones and then another one where he doesn't say anything when obi-wan hands him luke on tatooine at the end of revenge of the sith so i'm really excited to see more of that character and get more insight into uh him as a person i think it'll be really cool to him as a person but also their chemistry him Mm -hmm. and obi-wan as well because i want to see more more spotlight in that because they both don't agree with each other's type of tactics so right. i'm curious to see of how we could see that on screen of as one of one of who considers himself still as a jedi but he's trying to stay hidden one other person that who doesn't like the jedis but still will help obi-wan so i'm curious to see of how the chemistry is on screen more in these six episodes it's gonna be really cool I can't wait. And also in this trailer, like Obi Wan, he didn't speak not one word, but yeah. his body language, his sadness shows of him trying to stay hidden, trying not to be part of the problems in this planet, but knew that he just kept being tugged along and needed to be within the problems because he was part of it. And I just love how with this trailer to be in two minutes, it shows his body language so well, and I just love that. Agreed. Tatooine has not been kind to uh, to Obi Wan's skin. Let's let's say that. Let's just say Tatooine has not been kind to a lot of characters because in Mando right now as well, a lot of characters have not been kind to Tatooine. It's like, a it's a harsh place to live. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a there's a planet with no water. So with anybody being here, it makes you question: Why are you still here? You're gonna go somewhere better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, I was gonna say. What are you looking forward for these six episodes? Now that we have brushed on what we saw from the trailer, now let's tackle what are we looking forward for these six episodes that is only, as of now, the limited series. Yeah, I mean, we just talked about Vader a whole lot, but Vader was nowhere to be seen in any of this trailer. Uh, and that's I smart. Can't... Yeah, it is, you know, you know, save save some of the most exciting things for the actual show. You don't need to spoil everything. Um, that's what I'm most excited for. I'm, I'm excited to see an Obi-Wan Vader rematch. I'm interested to hear how they talk to one another. Uh, I, I want to know if Obi-Wan refers to him as Anakin because in, in A New Hope, he only calls him Darth or Vader. Uh, he never calls him Anakin. And I know at that point in time, George Lucas had no plans for any of this oh, shit. Definitely but, not. Um, I, I'm really just interested to see what Obi-Wan's mental state is when those two characters are reunited and also Anakin's mental state being reunited with his, his old master who essentially uh, cut off three of his limbs and left him to burn to death on Mustafar. (laughs) So I can't imagine that Anakin is super pleased with Obi-Wan Kenobi, (laughs) but um, that, that interaction is obviously, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, what uh, I'm most hyped for in regards to this show. That he could be mad at him or maybe he's pleased that this is what he wanted as dark. Maybe he's, maybe he's actually thankful to him. So that's something that we need to see. Of that's true. It could be like, um, like some type of sadistic, like thanks to you, I've reached my full potential or yeah. something like that. You know, like it'd be cool him, too. I'd be down for that. Like, Hey master, thanks to you. I have become who I'm supposed to be or something like that, you know, between those lines. And I'd love to see that. But, I'm curious, but what I want to see is that what other characters are we going to see in the show? You know, Bob, you know, Cat Kane, um, Darth Maul, if he pops mm-hmm. up, any characters, um, any characters from Rebels, 
we have um what's the one who's the master of who was the master of Ezra? I'm drawing blank. Uh Kanan. Yes, Kanan. Mm-hmm. If we see any characters to pop in Tatooine, that'd be pretty interesting to see that could lead up. Or oh, like I said, Ahsoka as well. That'd be pretty interesting that if we see a little yeah. tie-in, a little tie-in to her show that could be coming out next year. So curious to see what would be popping in in these six episodes because there's not been a lot of conversation, which I'm happy that a lot of leaks have not happened for this show. And I'm happy that we're being very tight lip. You know, Lucasfilm is usually um, much better when it comes to plot leaks uh, than Marvel Studios is. I'm not going to lie. They they did accidentally let the, the script for Rise of Skywalker slip uh, probably like three months before that movie came out, yeah. which sucked. But uh, typically they're they're usually pretty tight-lipped like you said and i and i do appreciate that as well the last question i want to ask you there's one that how we know we both love mando um i i don't know how you feel about the book of a fat but in the credits it doesn't show dave filoni or john farrell for the obi-wan how do you feel there's only kathleen kennedy and other people that have not made mando in the book of a fat as their passion projects but this one has don't have their name attached to it. How do you feel about that? Or do, I'm totally does okay with concerns? it. I'm totally okay with it because Deborah Chow is the showrunner for mm-hmm. the Obi Wan Kenobi show, and she directed several episodes of The Mandalorian. Correct. So she's been involved in that project. You know, even though you're not John Favreau, or Dave Filoni, they're not the only ones that can make good Star Wars. So uh, I'm not worried. I'm not worried at all. All right. So do you have any um, last comments about the Obi Wan trailer? Obi Wan thoughts before we transition. No, bring it on. I'm ready for May 25th. All right. So, guys, so let us know how you felt about it, the Obi-Wan trailer and what did you think about it? Are you excited? Do you feel any type of way? But to transition to, um, this is as this is our first Star Wars video of this year on the channel. So we also want to discuss what we're looking forward for the rest of this year of Star Wars and what did happen earlier was the Book of Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett as well. But I know, um, Chris, you gave a full long spoiler type of discussion with mm-hmm. Steve. Would you would you want to give a quick type of plug towards your video and give you quick thoughts about the book of Fett? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can hear the full conversation over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash papaholics. Um, in terms of how I feel about Book of Boba Fett, Vash not, might not be too happy with what I have to say, but... Let's find uh, out. Let's see. There, there were elements that I really liked about the book of Boba Fett. However, I feel that the show uh, lost its way over the course of its its six episode, seven episode run, right? It was seven episodes? Yes, seven. Uh, and it, it kind of lacked identity because of the way in which it shifted characters around, around episode six, episode five, I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm being intentionally vague. I don't want to like spoil the show for anybody that hasn't seen it yet. But uh, the book of Boba Fett to me kind of felt like an afterthought in terms of how Lucasfilm is developing their shows. I think they saw a lot of success in The Mandalorian. They brought Book of Boba Fett back for season two. And then while they were biding their time for Mandalorian season three, they said, hey, we might have some concepts here. Let's let's stretch it out as much as we possibly can to make uh, another season of something Star Wars in between, which is a shame in my opinion, because I absolutely love the Boba Fett character prior to going into that show. So uh, needless to say, I was pretty disappointed with the show, but there were a lot of things that were cool about the show. A lot of great Star Wars moments, I would say within the show, but overall as a complete narrative, it was uh, it was kind of disappointing. How do you how did you feel about it? How did I feel about it? I am in between how you felt and optimistic. I'm always optimistic one in 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 all the shows because I try to be hopeful. That's a good way to be because you know <laughs> I agree 100 percent with what you said. I feel like this was a project that they felt like was it's kind of like a comic book or it's kind of like a book how you have or like a game. Of how you the main storyline, but right? here's Mando season one, here's and then here's Mando season two, but then here's Mando season three. But they're they're not ready to have Mando season three, so they want to have a side quest. 
like a little side project. Exactly. And that is bookable but fit. But I felt like that side project was like 2.5, meaning season two of Mando, but then kind of season three to lead up to season three. And I I understand what they want to aim for, but I felt like they needed another couple of months to prep for pre-production for the script and know what they wanted because I understand people's gripe about the motorcycle, about the crew, about Boba, of how he wants to be, of how he wants to become the kingpin of Tatooine now. Why is this part of his character now? I yeah. understand, I understand everything of that retrospect, but more like they kind of shoehorn what they want to do with with Boba and Mando and to set up with certain other characters to lead up to Mandalorian season three, which I get. But like you said, I don't say it's a bad show. It's still much better than other projects we have gotten from Star Wars, but it's definitely a step down from what they did with Mandalorian season one and two. Yeah, you know, um, people who watch my show are probably tired of hearing me rag on this particular movie, but I would gladly watch the book of Boba Fett before revisiting Rise of Skywalker. So <laughs> take that as you will. If the Rise of Skywalker is the third movie of out of the, the sequel, sequel trilogy. trilogy. Yeah. Yes. Still haven't seen the third one. Still haven't seen it. I'm just I just it's never for the went. Best. It's for the best. I just <laughs> haven't gone around to it. Don't plan to at the moment. And until they make another sequel of the sequel trilogy, then I will get to watch it. But at the okay. moment. It at the moment doesn't seem like it's high in my list. So which I'm that's, fine with. That's okay. Yeah. You're living a better life right now, having not seen it. So <laughs> well, overall, the book of a fit was enjoyable for what it was. Um, if they ever do make a season two for this, I would have I would have no problem to watch it. But I hope they know from their mistakes from this season one and they could fix it and make it better. That's what I'm mm-hmm. hoping for. I would hope the same. All right. So with the early show that came out earlier this year, the past two months, and with Obi-Wan coming out in the next two months, what's next in the pipeline? It's Bad Bad Season 2 mm-hmm. and, um, and, and Andor. Andor? And Andor. And possibly uh, the Mandalorian Season 3. It doesn't have right. a confirmed Around date. December. But, but they Maybe. do say it's late 2022. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about those four shows um, coming out? Because Bad Batch season one, I like it. I think it was 17 or 15 episodes. Out of those, I like 13 or 14. So I like like mm-hmm. a good amount. I feel like two episodes you could have taken out. Mandalorian season three, of course. Like you, you can't have no more of our uh, boy Mando and what's going to do with the Dark Saber and what else could be coming out more. Right. And I don't know much about Andor. So if you do, you could take the floor on that. Okay. Um, Andor, just just to enlighten the the viewers while we're talking about it, Andor is going to be a prequel series to Rogue One, obviously, because he dies in Rogue One. <laughs> so we can't do a show after that movie. But uh, I also don't know a whole lot about that show. But it's basically just him, you know, traversing space. Uh, I think K, uh, K2SO is also going to be in the show, so it might tackle like how the two of them met. But uh, I, I liked Diego Luna in in uh, Rogue One, and I, I'm I'm excited to see more of him. You know, Rogue One's not my favorite Star Wars movie, but I I think he's a good actor, so it should be a good show as well. Uh, what am I most excited for out of all these? I mean, I think, like you said, Vash, it's safe to say that like, man, Mandalorian season three is probably the thing that everybody's most excited for. But to be perfectly honest, I'm really interested to see where Bad Batch season two goes just based off of the time frame in which this show is taking place and where they left off season one. We're about to get into some really interesting, uh, possibly cloning practices uh, in the show, but we'll see. I'm curious as well for Bad Batch more than anything. Yeah. With Mando, we could guess where the story could go, but this is type. This is the type of territory that we don't know. As much as that, we, we can make theories, video guess of the dark saber, mm-hmm. who any other characters we could see. It could go anywhere. Yeah. But with Bad Batch, they're in a pocket that they literally cannot do much. 
they could do a small things amount, but they cannot really change a lot of things since that's in the pocket of storyline that a lot of things has already happened after and before. But what and- I like about this, the era that they're exploring in the Bad Batch is that this is an era that's gone untouched in the Star Wars universe for a really long time. You know, the very early days of the Empire, the transition from the Republic to the Empire, how they're weaning out clones and replacing them with recruits. Like, this is something I've wanted to see for a very long time. So despite the fact that, like, we know where the Bad Batches come from and we know where they have to end up, uh, I'm really enjoying kind of living in this uh, space in the Star Wars timeline. Agree. And also, as a Star Wars star, um, as a Star Wars Bad Batch, I think has a good two more seasons season two mm-hmm. and the possibly season three they could end off and i feel like that could tell their good amount of story that they plan to tell and with bad batch like you said the last episode i'm like where could they go next and how could they get out of this because they take me left on in a very in a very ambiguous state yeah. because i thought they were all gonna have a happy family at the end mm-hmm. but when you're stubborn, you're stubborn. You you have to trust your beliefs. So it's understandable why a certain character stood the way he stood his ground. Yeah. But I'm curious to see what's going to... Are they ever going to have their happy ending as brothers? We'll find out. I, I don't exactly know what's going to happen to Crosshair considering that the Empire basically portrayed him. Betrayed yeah. him. And uh, has, has no regard for his life whatsoever. So if he's planning on returning... To like continue to be part of their military. Uh, I don't know if he's going to receive uh, a warm welcome when they see that he's alive, even though he doesn't want to return to the, you know, the, the bad batch. So we'll see yeah. what happens. There, there are a lot of interesting threads that they could follow in season two. And I think that's why I'm so excited for it. Same. Um, I think that's about it. That's coming for Star Wars um, and or, um, Mandalorian season three, I can't wait for that. If it comes out later this year, can't wait to see another great eight episodes and what could be next and what's that gonna tie in with with Ahsoka because I feel like that's gonna be tying in the next show that'll be coming out next year. Because mm-hmm. right now, because right now Ahsoka is in pre-production, and that's Correct. what I'm most I'm ex- I'm most excited about because of the rumors of what she's gonna be doing currently now. And what she's trying to find somebody else. So that's what I'm curious to see. It's going to be very cool. Hopefully we get a live action Thrawn. That would be pretty dope. Quick question towards Mandalorian season three. Do you think we're going to see um, the girl from Rebels? Um, the dad, the Mandalorian outfit that did the graffiti. Sabine? I'm to... Yes, Sabine. Thank you. Uh, I, th- From what I've heard... Uh, and obviously take this with a grain of salt, she is supposed to be in Mandalorian Season 3. There were a lot of rumors floating around that she was supposed to be in Mandalorian Season 2, and we saw how that panned out. So again, that's why I say take this with a grain of salt. So, But yeah, from what I've heard, she's supposed to be in Season 3. So fingers crossed. All right, so I'm excited for that. So Chris, have any last thoughts more about Star Wars? What are you excited for? Obi-Wan, anything that you, you want to discuss before we wrap it out? No, I think we pretty much covered it. All right. So the careful for spoilers fans, if you enjoy the Star Wars thoughts breakdown of the Obi-Wan trailer and what we're excited to see for the future of Star Wars, and if you do want more Star Wars content, let us know down in the comment section down below because if we do want more t- content, this will be something that I think we could do twice a month, myself and Chris. There's no type of schedule for it. But if you guys want your reaction, your thoughts, and your feedback is what will make this happen. So we appreciate that very much. And thank you for your support. And Chris, where can the good people find you? You can find me personally on Twitter at Chris Conkling, talking about all things nerdy, video games, comic books, movies, television collectibles. If it's nerdy, I'm talking about it. And then, of course, you can also find my podcast on Twitter at Papaholics. We're on Instagram at Cast. Uh, you can email us at popaholicscast at gmail.com. And then, of course, uh, the audio version of the podcast is on all your favorite podcast platforms. And then we have a video version of the podcast as well, as I mentioned earlier, at youtube.com slash popaholics. So, and we have Star Wars content. So if you want some Star Wars content from me right now, 
you can head on over there. Go check them out. They're amazing people. They're great. Go thank you, sir. Check out and thank Chris you for and having me. It's always of a pleasure. Course. You are the Batman to our council of villains, <laughs> even though he's not a villain. But if you want to consider the Batman who laughs, then I guess you are the one. Some people would makes... consider Batman a villain, I think. So yes, that is true. Some people do consider him, you know, the cops of Gotham. You know, the um, you know, they consider him a vigilante. So it depends on the ask, circumstances. It depends. <laughs> Very true. But you can find me anywhere and everywhere of Le- legendary Vash on the C- on the Seaforce Villain Show, or if you guys want a Star Wars show, let us know as well. And at the Enemy Podcast, Shona Ronan, and anywhere that you can find my name on the IBD credits because I work in production as well. So appreciate guys' support. I'll see you guys the next one. Take care. <laughs>